Good morning, church. It is so great to see all of you this morning. Welcome to our streaming worship on this first Sunday of Advent. Happy New Year. Happy New Church Year, church. If you're visiting with us this morning, welcome. We are so glad that you're here. I'm Pastor Chris, and I am grateful to be worshiping together with you this morning. If you're curious about New Hope and who we are, I invite you to visit our website at newhopelc.org. And if you have any questions about what we're about or you want to know more, please feel free to send me an email. I am at pastor at newhopelc.org or you can email our admin, Danny, at info at newhopelc.org. Church, we want to encourage you to share this worship service with your friends and family. Post it to your social media pages. Invite folks to worship with you this morning. This season of Advent is a time of preparation and waiting. Things that it seems that we're pretty practiced at at this point this year, right? The expectation the waiting, the longing. In a time of pandemic, we know what that feels like. And in such an unknown time, we come together to join our prayers and our praise of the one who knows us, God, our creator, and Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Wherever you are this morning, whether you're doing pretty great these days, or you're barely holding it together, whether you are full of all the joy and, and spirit of the holidays, or maybe you're just not feeling it this year, I want you to know that you are welcome here. Friends, Emmanuel is a promise. God is with us in the great times and in the times of struggle. God is present here. A reminder that there is a separate video with all of our COVID-19 specific announcements. That video was just updated this past week, so please take a look uh, at that for the most up-to-date information. That video can be found down in the description. The best place to get all of the information about everything happening here at New Hope all together in one place is our Thursday afternoon e-blast newsletter. If you're not already connected to and receiving our Thursday afternoon e-blast and you would like to, please send an email to info at newhopelc.org with the word e-blast in the subject line and we will get you added to our distribution list. We have two opportunities for logging on and staying connected during these times. Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. and Wednesday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. The connection info for both of those can be found in that Thursday afternoon e-blast. Today, the first Sunday of Advent, November 29th for our Faith Formation Time, Pastor Janelle's uh, Advent drive through event is happening from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. and our adult forum is continuing on Zoom with our book discussion on Dear Church. There are a few announcements that I want you to, I would like for you to make note of this week. There are a few ways that you can support our partners and our friends over at Armstrong Elementary, from reading buddies to prayer partners to donating uh, to help us purchase bikes as attendance prizes. Also, please note that Meals on Wheels is urgently looking for some volunteers to help. The Gulf Coast Synod's uh, Giving Tuesday effort is a special appeal this year for St. Paul Lutheran Church in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, their sanctuary was devastated uh, by Hurricane Laura, and so the Gulf Coast Synod's given, Giving Tuesday appeal is trying to raise money to help them pay their deductible on their insurance. And also note that there will be a few more opportunities coming out next week uh, for ways that you can continue to be generous during this season. A reminder that although we aren't gathering together physically, your continued offering is still needed during this time. 
the staff and the volunteers at New Hope are still working incredibly hard to bring you these great worship services and all of the many great resources and the many partner ministries that I just mentioned are also dependent on us for our support. Um, so however you choose to give, you can mail in your offering, you can drop it by the office, you can also very easily give online uh, however you choose to give, please do continue to give your offering during this time as you are able. And finally, church, we have a video announcement from our director of music and choral activities, our organist in residence, and the artistic director of the Phil Kramer, Phil Kramer recital series, Dr. Michael David Gate. Hello, everyone. I miss seeing you and worshiping together in person on Sunday mornings. I hope that you're participating in extreme worship services and that you're enjoying singing the hymns each week. I'm speaking to you today to deliver news that I have accepted a call to serve the people of All Saints Church in Winter Park, Florida as their next director of music and organist beginning on the first Sunday of Advent. As a result of this appointment, I'm resigning from my position at New Hope. My time at New Hope began a choir rehearsal way back on March 18th, 2012. So many things have happened in the nearly nine years since my first day of ministry on FM 1092 Road in Missouri City. I am so thankful for the many great memories that we have together, and I cherish the lasting friendships that I've made here. I am also so proud of the great things that we accomplished to enhance our community's worship. It has been my joy to lead our singing and to develop a repertoire of sacred song that is inclusive and vast. It has been a pleasure to work with the Sanctuary Choir and to watch their faith deepen through participation in our music program. I remain humbled by the commitment to the liturgical arts that I have come to know as the normal at New Hope. I am grateful for the opportunity to serve as artistic director of the Phil Kramer Recital Series, which even got some press coverage from the Houston Chronicle and KUHF a couple of times. As I look back on my tenure, I can't help but be reminded of some of the challenges that we faced. There were definitely some hard times, especially in my first four years. We have also grieved the loss of some of our close friends, and we've gone through major life transitions together. I hope that our music brought you comfort and aided your healing during those difficult days. Thank you so much for your support, for your prayers, and for your friendship through the years. I am forever grateful to have been your director of music and organist in residence. Thank you. It has been my absolute privilege and joy to have worked with Michael these past four and a half years during my time here at New Hope. Uh, I am honored to call Michael a friend and a colleague. We will certainly miss um, Michael and we wish he and Sarah and Como all the best in their move to Florida as they start their new life there. We will miss Michael greatly, but we give thanks to God for the time that we shared with him. Church, again, we are inviting you to share together in a sacred meal each week. So we invite you to grab some bread and wine or grape juice, grab whatever you have available. We trust that Christ is present uh, however and with whomever you are gathered today. Christ is present because Christ has promised to be present, and these are promises you can trust. We want to encourage, your, encourage you to bring yourselves fully and participate in worship this morning, church, as pandemic fatigue continues and we get fed up with the loss of so much that feels normal to us. It can feel like God is absent or even missing. Advent reminds us that God is still moving and active in our lives, if even imperceptibly. Emmanuel, God with us. God is present here in our midst. This worship service happens because you are part of it, so we invite you to set this time apart. Grab your Bible or open the Bible apps on your phone and follow along in the readings with us. We invite you to sing along with the hymns that'll be up on your screen. We invite you to truly 
worship this morning. Grab your coffee, prop your feet up, and settle in. Light a candle, sit on the floor, make this space sacred. Whatever helps you to set this time and this space apart. Welcome to worship. We begin with an order of confession and forgiveness adapted from Father Daniel Berrigan. A reminder of what is true. It is not true that creation and the human family are doomed to destruction and loss. This is true. For God so loved the world that God gave God's own Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This is true. This is true. It is not true that we must accept inhumanity and discrimination, hunger and poverty, death and destruction. This is true. I have come that they may have life, and that abundantly. This is true. This is true. It is not true that violence and hatred should have the last word and that war and destruction rule forever. This is true. A child has been born for us, a son given to us, and authority rests on his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting, the Prince of Peace. This is true. This is true. It is not true that we are simply victims of the powers of evil who seek to rule the world. This is true. To me is given all authority on heaven and on earth, and I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is true. This is true. It is not true that we have to wait for those who are specially gifted who are the prophets of the church before we can be peacemakers. This is true. I will pour out my spirit on all people and your children will prophesy. Your young people shall see visions and your elders shall dream dreams. This is true. This is true. It is not true that our hopes for liberation of humankind, of justice, of human dignity, of peace, are not meant for this earth and for this history. This is true. The hour comes and it is at hand that we shall worship God in spirit and in truth. This is true. This is true. So let us enter Advent in hope, even hope against hope. Let us see visions of love and peace and justice. Let us affirm with humility, with joy, with faith and with courage, Jesus Christ, the life and the light of the world. Amen.
up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sin, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Creator and the Holy Spirit, one God, both now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence when you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for you. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds, they are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There's, there is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are as a parent to us. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. So do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and, and do not remember our iniquity forever. And now consider, we are all your people. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the son of humanity coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then the son of humanity will send out the angels and gather the elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From a fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and starts to put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these, thi these things taking place, you know that the sun is near at the very gates. Very truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or that hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the sun, but only God. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like it is like someone going on a journey who, leaving home and putting the servants in charge of their own work, commands the doorkeeper to keep watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the Lord of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at the dawn, or else, coming suddenly, the Lord may find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Hi, it's finally here. We have made it through the green season of ordinary time. The season after Pentecost, would you believe it? 
We are in the first Sunday of Advent. Advent 1. We are going blue. Look at that. Here we are. What an exciting time as Advent reminds us to prepare for the coming of Christ. Also in this time, we often hear about someone named Saint Nick. Maybe you've heard of Saint Nick, but maybe you haven't heard the whole story about who he is. So I'm gonna invite you to listen today to a short story, tell us all about Saint Nick. This is the story of Saint Nicholas. The church remembers him during Advent, which is the season for getting ready to come close to the mystery of Christmas. Nicholas was born many years ago in what is now Turkey. When Nicholas was still a child, his parents died. They were very wealthy and they left him a lot of money. Nicholas wanted to give his life to God, so he became a priest. The people of Myra, the town where he lived, knew he was a holy man, and so they made him a bishop. Nicholas used the money his parents left him in his position as bishop to help others, especially the poor and sick. He saw Christ in everyone and had a special love for children. There are many stories about Nicholas. In one story, he heard about a family that had three daughters. The family was so poor, they could not pay for them to get married, and they thought about selling their daughters to be servants. Nicholas took three bags of money. And dropped them in the window of the family's house. The daughters did not have to be sold as servants, and they were able to get married. When Nicholas was very old, he died. But people loved him so much, they kept telling stories about him. When the emperor of Russia heard these stories of Nicholas, he decided to make him the patron saint of Russia. People in Russia began to celebrate St. Nicholas in December, the coldest, darkest month of the year. They would leave their shoes by a door or a fireplace. And in the morning, they would find coins, candies, apples, oranges, and nuts. The story traveled westward to Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Holland. And when the Dutch people came to this country, they brought the story here too. We celebrate St. Nicholas on December 6th because he gave gifts for God. I hope you enjoyed the story. Now let us pray. God, Thank you for all the saints that teach us how to love you and our neighbor, including Saint Nick. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please pray with me this morning, church. God of hope. Stir up your power and break into our world. Restore hope in our hearts. Help us embody that hope to a hurting world. Amen. What do you hope for? What's giving you hope? When things are really, really bad, when it feels like things can't get any worse, where do you find hope? On this first Sunday of Advent, we are being brought into explorations of hope. And I have to be honest with you, hope is one of those things that I struggle with. Not because I'm a particularly distressed or despairing person,
but because I try to view the world honestly. Like, I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist, and sometimes my realist side takes the driver's seat for far longer than it should. Hope is something I struggle with because I tend to take an unvarnished view of the world, and truthfully, friends, I often don't like what I see. And I suppose maybe that's just the world we live in, but it's hard, you know? And it weighs you down sometimes, right? Maybe this is true for you too. It's been true for most of our world and for most of our history, because while we humans are capable of great beauty and incredible good, we humans are also responsible for some of the most horrific and ugly chapters in our global story. And it can be really, really difficult to muster up even just a bit of hope in the face of so much hurt and pain. That's really true in the biblical narratives too, by the way. Our verses from Isaiah and the Gospel of, of Mark are both written to a people and communities experiencing tremendous hardship and a profound sense of lost hope. Isaiah 64 comes from the third block of writing under Isaiah's name, actually probably written 200 years or so after the original prophet Isaiah, the OG, as it were. But it is written to an Israelite people who had recently returned from their exile in Babylon. They had returned to Jerusalem to find that the city they left was no longer the city that remained. They were now the outsiders, their practices, and their customs, and their ways of worship were the ones being called into question. They had been forcibly removed from their home, made to live in exile in a foreign land for at least a generation. And now they were allowed to return only to find that, that they weren't the ones in charge and in power anymore. They had their agency taken away from them. And the Gospel of Mark, the earliest written Gospel account, is written in the immediate aftermath of the destruction of the Second Temple in Jerusalem. And if you've still got your Bibles open or the Bible apps on your phone pulled up, uh, take a look with me at the first part of Mark chapter 13. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, Rabbi, what large stones, what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. And when Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked Jesus privately, Rabbi, tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that these things are about to take place? See, this whole chapter in Mark is talking about the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, and the temple was the center of religious and social life, so its destruction would have absolutely felt like the complete end of the world to Mark's audience. And so the people in these first century Christ-believing Jewish communities are left wondering if they're next. Right? Like if the temple, if God's dwelling place on earth can, can so easily be toppled, what chance do God's people, what chance do any of us have to possibly avoid the same destruction? Things were utterly hopeless. And, and maybe... As you look around today, as, as you watch and read the news, 
Maybe you feel the same. I've learned a new term in this pandemic, doom scrolling. Doom scrolling is when you obsessively scroll through your Facebook and Twitter feeds, consuming article after article after quick bite after update of negative and doom and gloom news. It's like the train wreck or the car wreck that you can't look away from. Because the thing is, you know the stats, you know the case numbers and death rates, you know all the negativity, but you still scroll. And it barrels you into a really unhealthy mental space and kind of a despairing place. It can leave you feeling so utterly hopeless. The verses we heard from Isaiah this morning are some of my favorite in the whole Bible. From the very first verse, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Your Bible probably says tear open the heavens, but sometimes only the King James translation says it just the right way for this old soul. I love this word, rend. The Greek word is schizo. It's, it's where we get schism from. It's the same word used to describe when prophets rend or tear open their garments in distress and mourning. It's the same word used later in Mark to describe the curtain of the temple at the moment of crucifixion. Interestingly, it's also the same word used at the beginning of Mark that we'll hear in a few weeks to describe the heavens opening up at Jesus' baptism. Oh, that you would rend the heavens. And come down. I love this verse so much. It's actually the inspiration for my Advent stole. Rending. Rending means a shredding of something. To rip something beyond the ability to repair it. It's a, it's a permanent fracture. You can't put a thing that's been rent back together again. You can, you can repair it, but it won't ever be completely the same. It won't ever be the thing it was before, at least not in the same way. It's a completely new Thing. In these verses from Isaiah, the prophet gives voice to our own pleas. We implore God, we beg God to rip apart, to tear to shreds the very fabric between earth and and heaven. We beg God to violently enter our world because if God's entrance isn't violent, isn't unmistakably noticeable, we might miss it for all the violence, death, and destruction that we've got already going on in our world. There's a sense in which only God can save us from this mess that we've got. Maybe you feel like that. Have you sat back at any point during the past eight months and thought, well, surely things can't get any worse. And then things totally get worse. Have you sat back at any point during the past eight months and thought, well, I hope Jesus is coming back soon because that's the only way we're getting out of this mess. Rent. 
rending, tearing apart, is a sign of ending, of distress and mourning and fracture and brokenness. But along with it, we carry the hope and the promise of what comes next, church. Because God specializes in repairing brokenness, in wiping tears from eyes, in bringing newness from things that are worn out, and most certainly in bringing life from death. God is doing a new thing if we only have eyes to see it. Because it's precisely into these moments where all feels lost that the prophet and Jesus try to speak a word of comfort. Keep watch. Keep watch, Jesus says. All of these things, the suffering, the gloom, falling stars and shaken powers, these are the warning signs. But pay attention when you see these things. Know that the son of humanity is near. And that noticing, it's almost imperceptible. You have to really be looking for it. Learn a lesson from the fig tree, Jesus says. Just as the branch becomes tender, just as you start to see the leaves poking out and starting to bud. For all of our doom scrolling, for all of the negative and end of the world news we consume, how much time do we spend looking for those tiny signs of hope. Hope is small, dear friends. It's not always big and flashy. We don't always get the glaring neon, neon sign proclaiming hope found here. No. If hope is something to be noticed. It stands to reason that we need to be looking. Advent is a time for waiting and expectation, but we don't wait. We don't wait idly or passively. We don't wait as if we don't know. We know what's coming in a few short weeks, church. The Christ, the light of the world, will once again break through the night and be born again into our midst. How are we preparing? How are, how are we making the world ready to receive this incredible gift again this year? I want you to practice awareness and attentiveness with me this season, church. Practice nurturing hope with me. What is God doing here in this place? What are the bright spots that God is calling new hope to live into? In a time of such great need, we know that the opportunities for generosity will be exceptional. How will you practice generosity this season, church? How can you create hope this season? Notice the tiny signs. Notice the light breaking through the cracks of night. It starts small, like a tree just beginning to blossom. But the light will soon burst forth 
like the dawn. quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, incredibly devastating hearth, uh, hurricanes, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion, and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. 
We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. We give you thanks for our partner ministries, Fort Bend Family, Family Promise and the East Fort Bend Human Needs Ministry, who do everything that they can to help alleviate these needs in our community. God, relieve their burdens. Sustain the bodies of those who are suffering and ease their minds. We continue to hold in prayer all those affected by this pandemic, the sick, the dying, the fearful, the unemployed, and the forgotten. We fervently pray for our nurses, doctors, and all those who are working on our behalf. Bring comfort and peace to your world, O oh God. Especially today, we pray for those we now lift before you, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray for the people in our families and in our congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Make us helpers. Make us accompaniers on their journey. In the midst of anxiety, fear, grief, and pain, help us to be mindful of opportunities for rejoicing and for giving thanks. We give you thanks for the many blessings you have given to us, including those we now lift before you, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We give you thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice peace or healing, those names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers. Bless all that we have to offer, that through our gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel. We pray. Amen. And now, church, together with the whole people of God, let us join in confessing our faith, the faith into which we are baptized, using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Church, in hopeful anticipation and expectation, we invite you to gather around with those who are near to you, whether present physically with your loved ones or present in your memory. Remember when we were last gathered together and how we remembered that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus gathered together with his friends for a meal, during which he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to each of them saying, this is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you. It is shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life until he comes again. And now together with the whole body of Christ and the entire communion of saints, 
we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray in the language most familiar, familiar to you or closest to your heart. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Church, at this time, I invite you to grab the bread and wine or grape juice that you gathered together earlier. Grab whatever you have available. The elements are not as important as those whom you are gathered together with. This is a sacred meal shared among loved ones. Whether with others or by yourself this morning, Christ is present here. This virtual community is our communion. Christ is present in this meal because Christ has promised to be present. These are promises, church, you can trust. They are promises you can hold in your hand. Please take a piece of bread, offer it to the person next to you and say, this is the body of Christ given for you. Then please offer them a cup of wine or grape juice and say, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please serve each person in turn. At this time, church, you may pause this video to do this as, if you like, or we also invite you to sing along with the hymn as we share in this meal together. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. This is food to sustain you. Behold Christ broken and poured out for you. peace of Christ be with you always. Church, as you share Christ's peace with one another, receive this benediction. The creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love and the unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.